So narrow focus, stop new learning, focus on risk and danger, suspicious of the unknown. I think we've mentioned that, that anything we don't know becomes a potential source of danger instead of a source of curiosity. It becomes a potential source of danger. Uh, all the difference in the world, okay? The broad categories, fear-inducing words and images is, is the process that, that gets us stuck there and then the attempt to, to gain power over. And we also gain power over with blame and put downs and harsh judgments, okay? That kind of makes me feel a little superior. And if you think of what bullying is, okay? It's power over someone that gives you an illusion of, of safety or control or something like that, but it doesn't really work, okay? Those people aren't living satisfying, fulfilling lives um, who, who get stuck in there. And when you attempt to, to ask questions and someone's stuck in fear-based thinking, you'll get diversion or attack. They'll, they'll move sideways to another issue or come right back at you. Okay, it's like there's not an effort to understand. Understanding is the opposite of fear-based thinking. Okay? Seeing clearly with an open heart is the opposite of fear-based thinking. Okay, questions? Comments? No? Okay. Okay, can you think of couple of examples of fear-based thinking that you've seen recently, anywhere, in your work, in your personal life, in politics, possibly? Politics, <laughs> 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 Well, let's just get a few examples of... Well, what of, about the deal with the, uh, you know, where uh, Trump supposedly uh, tweeted that we were now uh, at war with they're going, uh, yes, you know, that's it, and Trump's going, no, we didn't. And now everybody in America is thinking, you know, at any time we bomb, mm -hmm. or we would have to bomb somebody or something. Mm -hmm. I mean, why, why are we even going down that road? Well, because fear-based thinking gives us the illusion that having power over someone brings us safety. And temporarily, it does. Sure. It works in the short term. I can feel more safe if I've got a bigger gun and faster on the draw than you are. Okay. <laughs> but you're going to come up with something else, okay, eventually, and I'm less safe in the long run, okay? So, so that's the big thing that we have to, to realize is fear-based thinking doesn't work, okay? It really, it, it, no one wins. Everybody loses. Um, how about if we take a moment to just talk among yourselves and see what comes out of that stimulation on, on that question, okay? Yeah. I'll share. Uh, I used to own a clothing store, and in about 19 or 2004, uh, I, I worked there for 11 years, and I bought it from the owners, and I ran it for four, four years, and things started changing in 2004 in men's clothing. I mean, men stopped wearing suits and things, you know, and everybody was casual like this, and, uh, and, and things, you know, just weren't going right, so I was afraid. Mm -hmm. I was the only one, you know. Mm -hmm. Older. And uh, I gained so much weight. I weighed like 183 pounds when mm -hmm. I closed the store. Uh, I was in terrible physical condition. My mental state was like this. It was just crazy what it did to me physically. Uh, it just it killed me physically. Um, but I had a photograph of you know those clover leaf uh, expressways, mm -hmm. in, like in Indianapolis and so. This was a photograph of one that was not finished, and he was on the top. And the guy was standing with his toes hanging over the edge, looking like this down at the ground. And I felt like that every day. Mm. You know, will I be able to pay the bills? Will I be able to pay the people? Will that, you know, I'm not taking the salary. I got it. And it was, it was just, uh, it just took everything in my mind to, uh, you know, manage my resources right and try not to go insane. Mm -hmm. Uh, and then finally, once I closed the store and started doing something else, um, and then I lost the weight, I started feeling better, and you mm -hmm. know, we all have our issues, but uh, man, living in that place is, is very, very difficult. Yeah, and thanks for sharing that because you brought up a really important point about fear-based thinking that I didn't mention yet, and that's unanswered questions. Mm -hmm. We have these questions that have no answer 
or that we don't take time to answer because we've got another question right behind it. So fear-based thinking, we ask, oh my God, what's going to happen? What if this happens? Oh my God, and then what happens? And I'm going, oh my God. And the, it's one question after another with no answers. Okay. Do that for a week. And if you stop, if you stop and restore some balance and answer each one of the questions. Okay, um, the market's changing. Uh, how can I best deal with this? Now, uh, I'm getting into the next slide here. Um, but we're transforming fear into caution and concern. But, 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 I'm sorry to interrupt you, but there's no. one piece that I think we have been missing, and that is when you're stuck in fear-based thinking, you're always looking back that way. Uh -huh. We should have. We didn't. If mm -hmm. only we had. Mm -hmm. Or you I could be looking ahead, too. Yeah. You know, yeah. It, it, and then it's always chasing you. Yeah. Yeah. What happens is thinking, <clears throat> thought, if you think about it, <laughs> is always in the past or the future. We and cannot think in the moment. We can only experience in the moment. Mm -hmm. Because as soon as I think, I've taken myself away from the moment. So fear-based thinking, thank you for raising that, fear-based thinking is always past or future oriented. Okay? It takes us away from the present, and the present is where we have to start solving the problem. Okay? We have to start here to get from there. And if I'm worried about what's over here and I'm here, I've got to figure out what's in between. And the fact is you can't do anything about the past. And the future hasn't happened yet, so you can't do anything about that. Well, you can learn well, from the past and you can prepare. Yeah, yeah. You can yeah. do that kind of stuff. Right? Yeah. To make the future exactly what you envision is very good. Yeah, and that's, that's also okay. actually a part of fear-based thinking, <laughs> if you think about it, because oh. it, 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 there needs to be an openness. To the extent there's an openness and a receptivity, we can see advantages and opportunities that we'll miss if we're, if we're just narrowly focused. And, and one thing that, that, that has made a difference uh, in my work is, is I've backed off from goals. I, I don't believe in goals anymore. Because what a goal does is get you to narrowly focus on getting to a specific point. And what I found is so many times I'm moving in that direction and I see, oh, there's something else that's more important than that. Mm -hmm. I'm going to go this way. And if I'm focused there, I don't see this. I see that as a distraction. Mm -hmm. And so many times I've gone in one direction that really ultimately had no benefit. When I looked at it in hindsight, it was the turn. And I'll miss that turn if that becomes my narrow focus of the goal. This so the, the question is, what direction am I heading in? And am I heading toward? learning and becoming more fully myself and realizing my potential and becoming more love? Am I moving toward love or am I moving away from love? If you want a real simple question to ask at any given moment, okay, what direction am I heading in? And if you're moving toward love, your life is going to become more meaningful and fulfilling. If you're moving away from it, you might think about whether that's where you really want to go.